So how many of you guys have a beer? Yeah, sure is the same All right, how many of you guys are scared of the dark? How many of you guys use an iPad? I do. How many of you guys use rubber sheets because you're still very scared of the monsters on your bed and definitely the monster in your closet? But when you are scared, when you have that fear, you you have a reaction to that, right? Yes. And you're scared, so what do you do? You have, you have to satisfy that reaction. So you, you know, maybe some of you guys like run to your parents, maybe to get that comfort. Maybe some of you guys, you know, just drown your and listen to music. Maybe some of you guys, you know, they don't, you don't have the luxury of having those things. So maybe you, you run to your friends. Maybe you like find that comfort in your friends instead. But I want you to guys to know that. Just like when we have that action, we have that reaction to run, to find comfort in something. We find that comfort in God. God, God isn't a comforter, he's the comforter. Y'all said that back. God's not a comforter, he's the comforter. There you go. Alright. God says in the Bible, come to me, take rest in me. And everything. So, I want to give you guys a So this is this is about Paul and his boys. They're pretty much there on a rowboat. They're traveling, and um, they're just pretty much going wherever God took them. And they took them to this place called Malta. And um, this is what happened when they were at Malta. Once safe from our shore, we found out that the island was called Malta. The islander showed us unusual kindness. They built a fire and welcomed us all because it was raining and cold. Paul gathered a pile of brushwood, and as he put it on the fire, a viper. Driven out by the heat, fastened itself on his hand. So the snake comes out and bites Paul. When the islanders saw the snake hanging from his hand, they said to each other, This man must be a murderer. For though he escaped from the sea, the goddess justice had not allowed him to live. For Paul shook the snake off in the fire and suffered no ill effects. The people expected him to swell up or suddenly fall dead, but he did. After waiting a long time and seeing nothing unusual happen, and then they changed their minds and said he was a god. There was an estate nearby that belonged to the, the Publius, the chief official of the island. He welcomed us to his home and showed us generous hospitality for three days. His father was sick in bed, suffering from fever and sent to him. And Paul went to see him. And after prayer, he placed his hands on him and healed him. When this happened, the rest of the sick people on the island came and were also here. They honored us in many ways, and we were ready to sail. They furnished us with the supplies we needed. So pretty much in this story, you know, Paul's going and he sees all these crazy islander people. He has no idea who they are. And he gets off, and he just does what God calls him to do and starts serving them. So, you know, he gets a pile, and he starts throwing the wood in the pile, and starts, you know, making a fire for him. These people have no idea who he is. And suddenly a snake jumps out, unexpected attack, and bites Paul. And any normal person would be like, oh, it's like a snake. You know, they freak out, right? I mean, I know I would. <laughs> but, but Paul didn't, simply because he was so filled with the Spirit of God, that he had absolute comfort in everything that he did. He didn't give too much attention to this attack. He simply shook it off. Also, he didn't glorify the attack. He wasn't like, oh, that's a huge snake. Everyone check out this snake that just bit me. No, he, was, he just, he was like, attacked him and just shook it off. He rested in the sovereignty of God. He didn't seek an explanation for the attack. He stayed busy with his work at hand. He didn't bite him and like, oh God, why would you make this snake bite me? Like, I'm not trying to get bit by a snake. I got all this work that to do for you right here. He didn't ask for an explanation. He just carried out his work because he had complete comfort in God and that he was doing the right thing. He didn't withdraw from what he was doing. He kept serving others. Not only that, we performed miracles after that. He didn't use it as a roadblock. It wasn't something that really affected him in any way. It was an attack, and because of his comfort in God, he just shook it off and kept moving. He kept moving, and then he healed like four people. And those people found God through Paul. 
and just simply his reaction to an attack. And we can relate to our own lives. You know, how many of you guys have experienced like an unexpected attack and you know kind of wish that you could have reacted differently? Or or maybe you've seen some of your young life leaders, maybe something's happening and your first reaction is, oh, that's a big deal, but they react differently than anybody else would. You know, maybe you've seen something happen with Will, like, you know, maybe he ordered something and he got something else, but instead of freaking out, he just put it cool. You know? I know, for example, I have lots of examples from, you know, lots of people that I know, but one that sticks out for me is Eddie. I don't know if you guys know, but we have a, a college worship, worship service. Sorry. Um, and Eddie is a Eddie is the leader of that. And we had this big thing playing for Super Bowl. You know, we had like you know, hundreds of people coming, and we had you know all different kinds of people bringing food, and it was a big thing. And um, so Eddie spent six or seven hours making sure that the Super Bowl would show. And so you know everyone starts coming, the day comes, and the food is there, and you know everybody's making arrangements, and people are coming, and all of a sudden like it doesn't work. The thing that he made sure was going to work for seven hours a day before, spent a whole day doing it, you know, all of a sudden it wasn't happening. And this whole plane was falling through for him. And it wasn't falling through, it was just falling apart. And he was like, dude, you know, everyone was like, we're, why isn't Super Bowl starting? Like, we're trying to watch Super Bowl, that's why we're here. And uh, Eddie just he didn't freak out. I, I would have freaked out. But he just didn't freak out, he just played it cool. And little did, does he know that on the way back, uh, one of the guys that you know came with us was like, well, I feel like it was more of a big deal to me that Super Bowl wasn't shown than it was for Eddie. Like I know if it was me, I spent all that time and effort, I, I would have been freaking out, you know, just like a snake attacking him. But Eddie didn't, you know, he wasn't like, oh, the devil's attacking, you know, intersection, like, oh my gosh, no, no, he didn't say anything like that. He just <coughs> knew that for whatever reason it wasn't working, and that that was God's fault for that day. So that's an example. I don't know if you guys have an example of, of friends like that, but you can really show the love of God just by living your life. Um, and Eddie couldn't have done that without God. Just like Paul couldn't have done that without God. You know, our, our first reaction is to freak out, like in a snake, like a or something. Like that's human instinct, you know, that's human nature. And the more full of God we are, the more likely we are to handle situations like Jesus. You know, the more that we try to be like Jesus, the more we pray, the more that we invite the Holy Spirit into our lives, the more likely we are to react properly to situations. And, you know, that's a miracle in itself. Do you guys know you can perform miracles? Like what Paul did is the same things that we can do. Like just like, you know, the cover that he had and healing people, we can heal people. We can perform miracles. You know, when Jesus left his disciples, they said, Jesus, where are you leaving? Like, you just rose from the dead. We want you here. Jesus was like, no, I'm telling you something much better. And that better thing is the Holy Spirit that everyone has when they invite Christ in their life. They accept it as their Savior. And you have that if you, you accept God in life in your heart. And um, anyways, the people who don't know Jesus, and you don't know God in your life, you know, maybe you're here like, I don't really understand. Like, I've never seen anyone like that. Like, look around. You know, start paying close attention to people you know, that say they live a godly life. And just watch. Watch, you know, maybe they make a CNO test when the same test that you're studying for. And it's not as big of a deal to them as you would have thought. Or, you know, maybe like, you know, their parents are in a huge fight. And maybe you can you can, you know, relate to that same situation. But unlike you, they're not really they're not really freaking out about it. They're just they're just comforting. You know, it's not like it doesn't bother them. But there's a difference between letting something bother you and taking comfort in knowing that God's plan for your life and just finding a rest in that. I think that's one of the best things that God gives me. Going back to the story about Paul, like, how do you think Satan felt looking up on that reaction? Like, he sent that serpent to distract Paul from all this work he was doing for God. But not only did it not work, but he used it for God. Like, how awesome is that? Like, not only did it not distract him from serving the people, like, he used it for them to see God, and then he healed, like, ten people. You know, imagine... If all of us took that same reaction to our lives, like how crushed would Satan be? God already won the victory. But just think about how much more in the dirt Satan would be if that's how we lived our lives every day, just com completely in comfort of 
and not worry about what things to do. <coughs> and I want you guys to know that like that's not out of reach. Like that's very possible. Awesome. Have that tonight. You can have that right now. Like it's not something you have to you know fast to receive, or it's not something that you have to you know change your whole life in order to have this. Like no, you just come to God. God's saying He's only like this. You just come to Him, rest in comfort. And no matter what it is, you know, for example, what really, you know, made trouble can and deep down in his heart is different than Colby, different than Amanda. And that doesn't mean that God doesn't care for those things differently. He cares for them just as much. The little things just like the big things. You know, little things that you may not think are a big deal to you, God cares so much for you, more than you can even imagine. You know, maybe like the fear of school, how you're doing in school, or maybe, you know, being bullied, you really struggle with being bullied every day, you know. Or maybe you really worry about what people think about you. You know, whether you have a boyfriend or a girlfriend, or whether you'll ever find true love. You know, your, your parents don't love you. Like, how could I, how could I love anybody? How can anybody love me back? You know, maybe you, maybe you have abuse, you know, sexual or physical. You're at home or in a relationship, or maybe with your friends. Maybe you're worried about your future. Like, you know, where am I going to college? Can I get into college? Will I go to the right college? If I do, will I fail out? You know. Well, I do the right things once I get there. Like, you know, all these things that you may not worry about. Maybe you're worried about just not being good enough. Or maybe maybe you're depressed. Maybe, you know, you just don't know your purpose in life. And if you guys don't get anything else, I just want you to know how much God cares for you, how much He loves you, how much He wants you to be in arms and to be comfortable by Him. And... Understand in your heart that nothing can touch you without first having God's permission. Y'all say that back. Nothing can touch you without first having God's permission. Nothing can touch you first without having God's permission. Like, how powerful is that? How powerful is that? You're not having to really worry about anything that's happening because it doesn't have God's permission first. And if it does happen in your life, and take comfort in knowing that God allowed that and that it's either to develop you or for your journey, for your own journey, for your ministry. So take rest in that comfort. Come to His arms tonight. Like everything that you're feeling, everything that you know, maybe you're worried about, anxiety, you know, whatever it may be, like don't waste any time not having that. Like it crushes my heart. Like my heart hurts. The other leaders, like their hearts hurt all the time. We pray for you guys all the time because we know from the things that you say, from the ways that you act like that you're hurting. And and we want you to have God so bad because of how we know that it helps us. Because that's what makes us whole. That's what gives us the culture that I couldn't live another day without. Like it's just that powerful. And it's that that just changes your whole life. And I just want to encourage you guys that you can have that. And talk to any of us after this, and, and it will seriously change your life, having that comfort every day, not knowing, you know, what may happen, but knowing the truth. The amazing comfort is yours. It's in his arms. Uh, I'll pray us out. Thank you, God. Uh, God, thank you for who you are. God, thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for bringing all these people here tonight, God. I, I know you have a bigger purpose, God. Thank you for, for your comfort in my life, Jesus. Thank you for everything that you've given us, God. Uh, your scripture says, Isaiah 41 10, do not be afraid. I will strengthen you. I will be there for you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. God, I'm so blessed for that passage, God, that, that you can uphold us and, and strengthen us. Because the Lord knows I can't do it all on my own, God. I can't do anything. But God, I just pray for these kids, God. I just pray that you work in their heart. And um, if they're hurting, God, if they find out their help for you, uh, the true help for you, the true help for you, we pray for all these things in your life. Amen. 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 Amen.